Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We got a whole bunch of news about the Avengers 4 trailer as well as an official Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline. Kevin Feige was teasing they would reveal an official one just because of all the continuity problems with Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, now we finally have it, so I'll break that down, but I'll talk about the Avengers 4 stuff first. There's a new round of that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Marvel-related comment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. I've been getting a whole lot of questions about when the Avengers 4 trailer is dropping because there were a bunch of rumors earlier this week, people saying that it might drop on Black Friday because people have done that in the past. There was a lot of Star Wars stuff that happened around The Force Awakens a couple years ago, but it seems like what's really going on is, is that Marvel isn't really doing anything special this week. There were a whole bunch of Infinity War Avengers related announcements recently, like Netflix said that they're going to be getting Infinity War December 25th, Christmas. So if you're on break from work, school, whatever, during the Christmas holiday, you'll be able to watch Infinity War as many times as you want back to back on Netflix. We're still supposed to get the Avengers 4 trailer really soon, but here's the thing. Next week, the week after Thanksgiving, is the one year anniversary of when they dropped the Infinity War trailer. They waited till after the Thanksgiving holiday and Black Friday to drop that. What they did is it was on a Tuesday, so the Monday before that, they did it on Good Morning America. So Good Morning America tweeted, this is coming tomorrow, and they just blasted it all over their social media accounts. So when they were ready to drop the Infinity War trailer, they let everybody know. There were no secrets. Like, they really wanted you to know that it was going to drop at a certain time on a certain day so that you were all prepared. So just expect Marvel to do the exact same thing. However, they didn't do that till the day before the trailer dropped. So don't expect them to talk about the Avengers 4 trailer until the day before they're actually ready to drop it. The other really big Avengers related thing that's happening next week is the Russos are doing a special screening of Infinity War where they'll do like a big Q&A session. So that's going to be happening after the Tuesday that potentially they would be dropping the Avengers 4 trailer. But the actual screening that they're holding is supposed to be for Infinity War. But I think the idea is, is that if they do decide to drop the trailer on the one year anniversary of the Infinity War trailer, then within a couple days of that, they have a special screening where they do a Q&A answering all kinds of questions about the Avengers movies. They'll be able to answer questions about Avengers 4 stuff in the trailer. They'll probably do a lot of trolling. They probably won't give away any big spoilers or anything like that. They'll be marketing it in a similar way to the way that they drop footage for Infinity War with a whole bunch of scenes where they remove things where they change the CG so you weren't really sure how many gems he had in his gauntlet. So just expect the same type of treatment for the Avengers 4 footage. That'll be half the fun, breaking down the trailer as if it's legit. Like, okay, this is happening, then this is happening. Here's a couple things going on in this frame. Then after that, trying to decide how much of it is fake and won't make it into the final cut of the film because they bent over backwards to make that CG version of the Hulk for the Infinity War trailer with no plans to put him in the final cut of the film. So just remember that, just don't freak out too much until next week. Next week is really when you need to be on alert. But if I get any news about them dropping footage before then or anything like that, of course I will totally do a video. But moving into the official timeline, this is part of a book that they're getting ready to release in the next couple of weeks. So that's why we have this official timeline. It wasn't like they just tweeted it out randomly. It does confirm major continuity error in that eight years later scene from Spider-Man Homecoming. So we'll get to that on the list. But starting off, we have 1943 to 1945, World War II, Captain America, the first Avenger. Then they don't have it on the list yet, but Captain Marvel is 1995, so technically she's the next film in the timeline after that. 2010, we have Iron Man. 2011, Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk right after that. Thor right after that in the timeline. Just because anytime you have movies that take place in the same year, usually it's a chronological situation. So if Iron Man is released first in the year, then that takes place first in the timeline. So Iron Man 2, then The Incredible Hulk, then Thor all during 2011. The year after that, they team up in the Avengers. Then Iron Man 3 picks up right after that also during 2012. Then the next year in 2013, we have Thor The Dark World. The year after that, in 2014, we have Captain America The Winter Soldier at the beginning of the year. Then Guardians of the Galaxy takes place just a little bit after that in the timeline. Then remember, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 takes place in that same year just a little while after the events of the first film. Then that next year, 2015, we have the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. Then Ant-Man takes place right after that. 2016, 
We have Captain America Civil War at the beginning of the year, then Spider-Man Homecoming picks up a couple months after that, confirming that it's four years later, not eight years later. I'll explain why I think they did eight years later, because that is a conscious choice on the director and the producer's part, and they do keep a running tally of the timeline. So I think they had a very specific reason for making it eight years later, just hoping that nobody would call them on the mistake. Then right after Spider-Man Homecoming, during 2016, Doctor Strange picks up. He's still a surgeon. He gets in the car accident, spends about a year searching for a cure for his hands, trying to heal them, then finds the Ancient One. The movie ends during 2017. Then a little while after the end of the Doctor Strange movie, Black Panther picks up, still during 2017. A little while after the end of Black Panther, the events of Thor Ragnarok take place, still during 2017. Then overlapping with that is the beginning of Infinity War, when Thanos shows up in the post credit scene in the Sanctuary 2 ship to take the Infinity Stone from Loki. The, the actual timeline for Avengers 4 jumps around a lot, it gets a little confusing just because of all the plot mechanics, but early in the film is a relatively short time jump into the future just to show that things have changed at the end of Infinity War, but the end of Avengers 4 takes place relatively close to the end of Infinity War, because remember they'll be fixing a lot of things, so it will be as if the snap has not happened, even though time does move forward a little bit from the moment of the snap. But even though it sounds kind of roundabout, it's a way to explain how the movie can end during 2018, even though the Infinity War snap happened during 2017. So a little time will pass because Spider-Man Far From Home picks up just minutes after the end of Avengers 4, and that takes place during 2018. I know people are confused about whether or not it's a prequel, but it takes place just a little while after the end of the events of Avengers 4 because it kicks off everything in Phase 4. Kevin Feige has been hyping up Spider-Man far from home like it's the beginning of all the new stuff we're going to be doing but getting back to that major continuity error in spider-man homecoming eight years later i think the reason the director and the producers probably landed on that number is because they wanted to feel like a long time had passed since the vulture had been running his black market shatari weapons operation and eight years is almost a decade, a long freaking time. So if they had been true to the actual timeline, Battle of New York in 2012, Spider-Man Homecoming in present day at that time, which was 2016, it would have only been four years later. And that just feels kind of weak, like only a couple of years. Lame, not enough time to have passed for the Vulture to get super rich off all these weapons. So you can see why they were just trying to make Vulture feel like a much bigger deal in a couple years isn't enough to do that. Like it actually has to be a significant amount of time. The funny thing after that too, Kevin Feige is like, yeah, we really try to avoid dating things in movies just because it causes problems like these. But they do actually have a document that they refer back to for continuity purposes when it comes to stuff like this. So if one of the directors that comes on for a new movie has a question about when certain things happen or one of the screenwriters needs to know, they just refer back to the master document. It's just that until this book had been released, they'd never revealed it publicly. But when I say they have a master document of when everything has happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's actually really detailed so it tells you when people did things not just when the movies came out so like if there's a certain event that a character refers to that happened a couple years ago they have it all very carefully documented so a lot of that will come into play during Avengers 4 because of all the really twisty stuff that they're doing with different dimensions alternate versions of characters looking into the past with the BARFing technology but also, if you guys didn't know, they're doing the Captain Marvel reshoots right now. So young Coulson, young Nick Fury are all in their makeup. Captain Marvel is wearing her green Kree Star Force uniform. So it seems like what they're shooting right now is it's the early part of the movie when she first comes back to planet Earth and first runs into Nick Fury and Coulson while she's searching for all those scrolls before she starts to remember her past. There's a bunch of Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Captain Marvel, and Avengers stuff that's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks, so I'll try to get through all the videos as fast as possible. Congratulations, Randall Bork. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the About page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Click here to rewatch that new Deadpool trailer, and click here for that Captain Marvel Avengers 4 prequel story. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.